Welcome to Comfort Avenue Number 2. This is my final outside video for tonight. So I put on a clinic, I guess. I made three or four videos for you guys, and I went across three platforms. And hopefully this will build up my following just a little bit. So I use this thing here as a weapon, and I reference the Warriors of Virtue. I also got to go put these balls up. Yeah, that looks cool. Let's give it a stroke effect. All right. So one thing you gotta understand about martial arts, all right, is no matter what martial arts style you study, you will never ever fully be aware of how many different people have studied that martial art. You will also never be fully aware of how different skill levels affect a fight until you are in a fight with someone whose skills are better than yours. All right? uh, professional fighters and wrestlers will tell you the same shit that I'm about to tell you right now. You always want to fight someone that's a, a fraction of a hair a little faster, or a little stronger, or a little tougher, because this teaches you what you need to work on. As an older person, I am not too thrilled about fighting somebody that's stronger than me, but I've also learned that at my age and all my life, who's not stronger than me? I'm 5'3", I'm about 120 pounds, and I get highly underestimated a lot. And that's fine, you know? I like it that way, because if you don't think that I can win, I got a better chances of winning. Hence for the whole video about adaptation and things like that. You have to understand the hardcore truth about being able to fight, all right? One, you probably won't win them all, but you don't have to lose them all either, all right? Learn how to bow out gracefully. But in the event that the fight is so serious that you can't bow out, then you will have to fight for your life, all right? Let me break that down. I didn't do this on live for a reason. If they want to see this, they can come to Kung Fu Havoc number two and watch. All right, a lot of variables happen in a fight, a lot. Of variables happening in the fight. Your experience, your age, your ability to adapt in a fight. These are very important things that you have to know. The younger you start, the better your awareness. So I started at seven, but I've been street fighting since I was six. My awareness is fair. It's not like it was when I was 20 years old, all right? It's not like it was when I was 15. It's not like it was when I was 14 or 13 when I got into the most fights, you know, if you aren't constantly fighting, you will lose a step. You will. It doesn't mean that you can't fight, it just means that you know you're gonna need to work on some shit, all right? There are lots of consequences that come with fighting. Your body takes a toll. Eventually, father time catches up with us, all right? Sometimes father time is speeded up when you have body parts replaced, like my hip replacement. I never, as long as I was breathing, thought that I would ever have to get a hip replacement or anything of that sort. I thought I would be able to do Kung Fu forever. Here's the real answer to that. Regardless of this hip replacement, I'm still going to fight. If I get into trouble out in the streets, I'm gonna fight because I might not be able to run, all right? That's the only thing. Of course, if I'm going against some coward that has a gun or a knife, I'm just going to give him what he wants for now because he has a knife or a gun. Now, also, in the situation, it also depends on how close that son of a bitch is standing to me. All right? If he's as far as I am from this computer right now, I'm a dead man because he has a gun. But if he's right here in striking distance... And if there's no innocent parties around, well, if I can get to the right side of them, 
I'm going to fucking beat him to death. But he has to be in striking distance. There's a lot of videos circulating on Instagram and YouTube about disarming people and how you practice with a loaded gun. Fuck that shit. I do not practice disarming people with a loaded gun. Now, back when I was in Mr. Innis school, I was taught how to take a gun from a person. Mr. Innis did not stress the fact that this shit might work in the movies. It's a good thing that I'm going to stress the fact that this shit might work in the movies. But in real life, people are unpredictable. You're going to struggle with that guy who has the gun. His hand's already in the trigger wall. So whether you get his wrist or the gun itself, there's going to be a struggle. And there's a 50-50 chance. There's a 50-70 chance. There's a 30-90 chance that you, not being the one with the gun, is going to get shot. All right? So don't do that. Guy with the knife, same principle. Let me explain that. A gun is more deadly because a bullet is... Uh, really, really swift. But a knife is just as deadly in the right fucking hand. So you have the handle of the knife times the blade. So that's the handle. The light's the blade. Alright? So blade's like right there. He's got yay so many ways that he can finish your day. Now, now, yay so many ways. Alright? That being said, you have yay so many defenses. Sometimes that shit you see with knife fight training don't always work. One thing one of the drill sergeants told me in the army was, you know, you gotta have great goddamn timing. You gotta have some knowledge of knives and human body mechanics. That's in all things though. Whether it's a knife or a gun, that's in all things. You have to have some human body knowledge of human body mechanics and some weapon knowledge. It will help your ass out in the long run. Trust me on that. But the thing is, you don't know what that person with that gun is going to do. You can't read their mind. You are not Professor Charles Xavier. And if they have a gun, if you're with your wife, you give them your wallet. If they have a knife, you give them your wallet. If they want your cell phone, you give them that shit. Don't try to fucking be a hero. I'm a martial artist and I'm going to tell you, don't try to be a fucking hero. Now, if I'm by myself, it's a different ball game. So yes, that was exceptionally hypocritical of me. But the truth of the matter is, if I'm by myself, I don't have to worry about my wife or my kids getting hurt. I have to worry about, am I going home to see them when I'm done? There's good news behind that statement. I don't have a wife and I don't have kids. So I'm blessed there. All right. The bad news is, I don't know what this guy wants. If he wants money, I don't carry money, all right? I mean, I carry it on me when I'm going to the store to go shopping, but in my everyday, day-to-day, -day, I don't carry that shit with me. You know, I have an ATM card. I can go get money, but I don't really carry that shit on me, which is kind of fucked up because I will go out of my way to go get money from the ATM card versus actually using the ATM card wherever I go, all right? That's just me. So... Let's do a couple more martial art things, and then we're going to call it a night. All right. In your adaptation of martial arts, if someone blocks your outside to inside crescent kick, which is this, you know, you need to be able to adapt. Now, if they catch your foot and you're doing this, depending on how they catch your foot, if they catch it under here, you got a few options. You have your step up insecurity. If you're a wrestler, you know what that is. If you're not a wrestler, Go Google it. Um, you have your 180, and you have your 360. And the 180 is basically an insiguri. So he has this foot. You're going to bring this leg up and catch them in the forehead. Your 360, you're going to take this leg all the way back around and catch them. All right? We've discussed this before. Same thing with hands. If they trap you in an arm bar, you're going to have to know how to get out of that shit. One wrong move, and you could break your own arm trying to escape. So you need to learn how to adapt. You know, if he's got you in a high arm bar and it's under his arm and it's locked up under here, you may have a problem. That's like where Arnold Schwarzenegger was caught up by the guy in the boiler room and he was like this. So, you know, it depends on how close you are to this person. Because, you know, you want to put your guard up and you can headbutt them or you can punch them or whatever the hell the situation of where your body is. Hence, where you have to adapt. However, if he's got you locked up, 
and your arm bar and y'all are pretty close where you can put your leg into his knee and push down, it's more than likely you can push one of his legs down to bring him towards and then turn your knee here and bring it into this guy's body. All right, if I had a training partner, it'd be a whole lot easier to demonstrate. It'd be a whole lot easier to demonstrate that versus me trying to describe that shit to you verbatim with words. Now, finally, you have to understand my principle of a fight. All right, small disclaimer. Don't try this at home while training. But if you happen to be in a fight and you are not a great fighter, my advice to you is really fucking simple. If a man cannot breathe, he cannot hurt you. It don't matter if he's six foot tall. It don't matter if he's five feet tall. You go for the throat or the lungs. Cut off the flow of air, the fight's pretty much done. This is Comfort Havoc number two. This is 11 minutes of your life that you can't get back. Thanks for watching. Now I'm going to go run these things.